Good evening traders, welcome to your 7 minute market update utilizing technical analysis to predict direction based on human emotion. Today is June 28, 2012. Lots to talk about, so let's get started. This is the uh, chart of the SPY, which is the ETF that tracks the S&P 500. I'm going to try and slow it down a little bit so it's not as confusing. Um, but if you uh, look at this chart here with all these lines, um, you should be familiar if you've been following these videos. Let me just save this drawing set here. Alright, so basic essentially what i'm seeing right now is a down move and like we discussed in previous videos we're basically just consolidating um sideways uh before another potential move down however there is a catalyst and that catalyst was the uh you know europe news and that is what we are having now or what we had um so there's uh, issues in Europe and obviously um, there's good news that came out in Europe and you know that was the summit thing that we were talking about in the previous video and um, um, there was some good news and so that gave a huge huge pop in the e-mini futures. Um, so basically let's take a look at that but before we do that let me explain to you what happens when you have a pattern that fails okay so a couple of things so uh, we talked about uh, like being a chess player we have to be prepared for any move that could potentially happen the first move that we were preparing for was a, a tag of this 50 moving average as well as this um you know pivot point up here actually this line should be drawn let me delete this here let me just move this line a little bit down here and then this line should be down here so a tag of this 50 moving average plus plus this um pivot point up here was um and you know a possible that we talked about in the previous video instead today we uh, pulled back we're down on uh, 38 cents and this you know if you look at the intraday let's take a look at, uh, at the intraday here let's see what happened during the intraday we gapped down right we had this uh, bearish ugly bearish consolidation but it was a bearish consolidation here and then we came down and then uh, that was pretty much over we kind of just uh, traded to the side um, we, you know we double tested this double bottom uh, we tested this double bottom here and towards the end of the day boom huge uh, buy-in uh, to the upside someone knew something right this is why we read charts someone knew something there was a possibility uh, I wouldn't make a trade on it but there's a, a high possibility that uh, we would have seen some um, you know upside action in the uh, markets uh, you know in the after hours so we had a small pullback uh, and it's only because we are uh, in resistance here and after this big move here you know it's, it's not unusual to see a slight pullback there you know some people taking profits and whatnot so now let's take a look at the e-mini futures and see what's how that's going to affect tomorrow's trading now remember as a chess player you're going to need to still uh, take into consideration the possibilities of um, each move uh, that we're looking at and the first possibility of the SPY was a tag of that uh, 50 moving average and that pivot point that we just discussed about you know 20 seconds ago uh, the second thing is the pattern fails and anytime like I said in the previous videos when the pattern fails it normally is a bigger move now this this is a chart a daily chart uh, I'm sorry a 10 minute chart of the e-mini futures um, and towards the end of the day, just like the SPY, um, we had some resistance ar around this point here. You know, the E-mini e features is times 10 the SPY. So 1323 is pretty much what the SPY was at. Right, so let's look at the uh, daily chart of SPY is at um, 132.79 times 10 is 1327, 1328, okay? All right, so as we speak, uh, well, as we speak, the markets or the E-mini features are currently up 20 points that is a huge huge pop all right this grayish section here is the after hours okay so this was the line that we just drew this line right here so the mini features went right into here and had a small pullback and then they got news boom huge huge pop in the mini futures um, and then you know we're just trading basically sideways looks like we've already broken off from the the, the high of the previous uh, which is giving a little bit more strength so you know if we get another candle up here you know the mini futures could have a huge pop a gigantic pop now let's just say tomorrow we hold this $20 pop in the e-mini futures. Right now it's at 1342.25. That would tell me that at 1342.25, the uh, SPY should open around uh, 134.25. Okay, 134.25. All right, this is we're back at the SPY daily chart. So let's uh let's uh, draw in a 134.25, which should be all the way up around here. 134.25 just like that and um, let me uh, move this X out of the way here and uh, let's make this color maybe pink all right now let's go to the daily chart all right you see this pink line here check that out 
if it holds 134.25 is going to be precisely the high look right here where the high is when I put my mouse over this candle here the high is 134.25 you see how that perfect it is this level here in my opinion okay so th as a chess player this is this is what I'm going to be thinking more than likely I'll probably stay out of the market and kind of just monitor it to see uh, what kind of action it, it's going to have there's going to be a, a lot of volatility obviously in the markets tomorrow whether it be up or down there will be a lot of volatility um, now let me give you different scenarios and I'm going to try and make it so it's a better understanding as I'm not all over the place okay first scenario we gap into this level here okay I would be very cautious of going long if we gap into this level okay so say we open at uh, 134.25 then I will be seriously looking for a pullback okay that's what I'll be looking for doesn't mean that I'll, I'm gonna take the trade but again in the intraday it's something that I'm gonna keep an eye on I'm sure we're gonna get some sort of intraday pullback at this level here if we're not already doing that now in the evening futures you kind of you can kind of see this pinkish line here um, I don't know if you can see it on this video but um, uh, let me make this line here a little bit longer so we can see where we're talking about uh, extend to right there we go this this pink line right here okay um, so if we, we gap into it then you know I'm gonna look for a pullback now if we gap above it meaning we open above maybe $21 and $22 or whatever the case may be we open above it then my target will be at 135.44 before I initiate another short yes this was good news don't get me wrong this is good news there is upside potential 135.44 will be my target um, uh, another caveat however again I might just stay out of the markets because next week is a uh, low volume week is a presumed to be low volume week it doesn't guarantee anything nothing's guaranteed um, but normally it's gonna be a low volume week because of the uh, 4th of July holiday which means you have to give the markets an upside bias meaning you were gonna float sidewards to upside during low volume times as we've seen time and time again whenever you have low volume in the markets uh, it's easier for institutions to prop the markets higher and that's what we've been seeing and we constantly see that over and over again it doesn't always happen but I would say seven out of ten times it does so you know your, the odds are in the favor of an upside bias would I make a trade on that specific reason alone no probably not but it does help if I'm in a long position right now okay now so that's the thing right so if we gap into it I'll look for a pullback if we gap above it meaning we open above this level here then I'll be looking for something around this 135.44 again I may actually initiate an intraday long position because next week is a low volume week just keep in mind big news like this um, you know it's it's a lot of times it's overrated it, it, it a lot of times it won't continue higher okay you just got to keep that in mind but you have to be cautious and like a chess player you have to make sure that you're aware of everything okay now let's just say we gap into this level um, and then it looks like that uh, the the markets are getting weak uh, volume has increased and I'll probably initiate a, a, a short trade here maybe for a day maybe uh, you know sell it on Monday or Tuesday now if we gap above here and we hit this 135.44 throughout next week now let's just say for example we gap over it and then we kind of trade sideways and the reason why I think that sometimes we trade sideways is such a big move up like we're gonna go from here all the way up here right we open above this these levels here a lot of times the markets need to consolidate first um, before you get another pop higher and that could be next week okay so we may get like some upside upside and then you know uh, let me just draw this a little easier to understand here um, say we gap above it so we, we, we can move up here we can uh, we kind of trade sideways throughout next week and then on Friday if we hit this 135.44 level I short that's my plan and that's the way I see it now let's just say this $20 move in the e-mini futures does not hold overnight some bad news comes out because you know it's it's rumorville right now um, they might spit out a rumor out there and then it, it just might crush the markets um, and then we continue down we're gonna have support right at this 200 moving average um, we also have 
this uh, gap window point here which will give pretty good support and then I initiate a long position simply because next week is low volume and it will give an upside bias plus we'll be into pretty good support you see how that's played that's how I'm playing it right now I uh, hope I hope it's easier to understand my plan of attack again before I initiate any trade I will look at the intraday to make sure that it looks like it's getting weaker or, or a turnaround is, is likely um, so you just gotta you just gotta be careful if you're currently short in the market short in the market right now like I was I got stopped out a couple of days ago but if you're currently short right now make sure you have an in money stop or make sure you have a stop in place because if we hold that $20 mark uh, it may you know it may just crush you if you're short right now but um, I don't think it's gonna be you know short a very long-lived um, upside um, rally I, I honestly don't think it's gonna be a long-lived thing I mean there's still problems um, it, it, I mean this this news that we got doesn't fix everything all the problems that we have today but it is good news and obviously the traders do like it the e mini features are popping it's just uh, a really really big move whether or not it holds is the question and uh, what 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 happens tomorrow morning and, and a lot of times you can tell by the pre-market trading where the where the SPY is going to open and again I'm gonna look for anything open that opens above this level here I'm gonna look for 135.44 and if it opens below or right into it uh, then I'll, I'll be looking for a, a slight pullback um, and, and that's the game that I'll be looking for now again no guarantees I'm actually gonna take the trade simply because it was gonna it's gonna be volatile as and I'm talking about swing trades day trades maybe but uh, definitely swing trades is something that you want to be cautious with um, it is still in a downtrend okay in all honesty I mean I'll be honest with you uh, let's see I I would say if we can close above uh, this candle here then maybe the trend may actually change in my opinion okay but for it to get past here that's gonna be tough okay that's gonna be pretty hard nothing is impossible obviously and um, you know um, nothing's guaranteed so uh, if we do close above here then I'm gonna have to reanalyze these markets and say that there is a possibility that the trend does change because that would give us another higher high right okay and uh, right now we have a higher low here and this is the daily chart so we're gonna have to pay attention to that um, you know ultimately let me just load my drawings back in here ultimately I do have a level here at 121.09 this is still a possibility I swear I had a 125 level in here uh, did it get deleted um, I don't know it might have gotten deleted let me see I swear I had a 125 in here I don't know what happened to it there was some I know there was a level around here uh, I don't know if I maybe I didn't save it or what but anyways um, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much over my time already but let's just take a quick look at the dollar all right, the dollar had a um, pullback today all right so um, again after you break out of an upper trend line or a triangle or whatnot you always get a retracement and possibly the retracement will be back to um, you know the trend line that it broke out from all right um, a lot of times people wait for that I normally don't normally 50 percent is um, what I look for and right now you know from this uh, gap up here this 50 percent has already been um, met so there's a possibility that the dollar could get another pop uh, it didn't quite we have to look at the DX instead of the UUP simply because now I'm going to show you uh, what's happening in the aftermarket now this is a 10 minute chart of the dollar okay so this is a DX um, in the aftermarket you'll see that the dollar traded up 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 let's see here oh, actually no that that big that big candle down that we saw in the daily that's kind of funny okay so this candle here is actually the aftermarket all right so that makes sense now now that makes sense because because of the pop in the e-mini futures remember the dollar is inverse to the market so dollar up markets down vice versa right because now this is the after our after our after market I should say trading right now this candle right here I'm just not used to seeing such a big candle but I guess we had such a big pop that this uh that candle there is actually uh, the aftermarket ca candle on the daily. We've uh, you know we've actually met this 50% level already in the aftermarket. So you know what? If we can break down, retest down here, we're gonna have some support at this 50 moving average here, and um, you know we should get a, a bounce there again. Don't uh, don't think don't, I wouldn't chase in the SPY. Okay. Um, the reason is there's a lot of game playing, and uh, right now 
the institutions know that after you know this huge spike in the markets people are probably going to jump on to the long side but the move is going to be so big if if the market's open where we uh where if the mark if the e-mini features hold that twenty dollar move the move is going to be so big that um it's going to be overextended and a pullback would be necessary in my opinion so just be careful you know just be cautious in my opinion for me i'm just going to stay out of it maybe do some intraday trades if possible uh, you know if my levels are met then i'll do some intraday trades but as far as swing trades go i'm probably going to stay away for a little bit um and uh you know hopefully the stocks that i'm looking at like walmart and whatnot uh don't hit their levels their resistance levels before uh the you know the end of the week next week because i really have some you know i really hope that um it hits the resistance levels at, on the friday of next week that way i can start shorting and then um you know the week after uh hopefully uh, the markets uh, take another dive and um you know i'll be in in the money again so um uh, you know, this is your 7-Minute Market Update. God bless to you all. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.